When crappies move into shallow cover, sometimes the best way to catch them is to go into stealth mode, employing a long pole to stay just the right distance away, yet allowing you to fish very precisely. Let's see if I can get that out of there. He actually ruined my plastic, I think. Selective harvest, man. I love to eat crappies. We're gonna save a few. Into the eddy you go. All across the country, you're pan fishing. Uh, there's a terminology now being used called single pole fishing. Well, if you're in Minnesota, that's all you can use anyway. But if you're in Mississippi, where this terminology comes from, because you have, you know, all across the south, you have spider rigging. So in Mississippi, for example, say you're on Eden Lake, you can fish four poles per person. So you've got eight poles out of the front. You might have another guy in the back with four more poles. So multiple pole. And then when those same guys go to fishing a single pole, they're typically sight fishing, visual cover, even though the water's dirty, so it's a piece of stick up timber, it could be a cypress knee, single pole fishing. And there's a real art to that as versus the multiple pole fishing. And we have the same thing going for us uh, all across the North Country, but it's a little bit in a di little bit different context. So today what I'm gonna be doing is about basically an early season thing into June, into July for us right here. We're sight fishing, literally sight fishing. We've got clear water, I can see the fish, I can flip to the fish when I see them. Got him that time. Come here. Up and in we go. And boy, they're nice fish, nice average fish and beautiful. They're starting to move deeper into the bed, which is gonna be good because when they're on the outside of the reed beds, they're typically roaming. And once they move on in, they get stuck. Get that out of there. And this is the sound you wanna hear in your Yeti right here. Now the whole thing about pole fishing, as far as tackle is concerned, well the, the pole itself of course obviously is fundamental. And I can tell you from vast experience uh, what length poles typically work best. And I would say as short as eight feet, but better nine feet to about 10 and a half feet. And when you're in a bed like this and you're, you wanna be able to flip out just a little ways to get to fish, the extra length is critical. The other thing that's critical on a pole, and this happens to be a, a 10 and a half foot air, Berkeley air rod, is that you not go too limp at the tip. That's the uh, fundamental problem. A lot of crappie uh, players will uh, want a nice light tip, but you don't need that when you're or single pole fishing. You wanna be able to drop it in there, and when you're fishing dirty water, to jiggle that thing a little bit, to give off some vibration to attract fish in dirty water. And here, you need to be able to have a little flip like that a lot of times in order to catch fish. So the tackle is fundamentally important. And then when it comes to line test, don't go too light. Not four, six okay, eight most of the time. And in heavy cover like timber, maybe 10. We're, we're catching fish and having fun, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I keep catching fish with the wind. It's a little harder to see but I'm, I'm going to accomplish my goal of a meal of fish for this evening. And I want to pull out here just a second and talk lures with you. So one really significant thing happening in the panfish world is the introduction of a whole lineup of a Johnson Crappie Buster panfish products. And there's a variety of shapes, but the newest thing on the market for this year are two of my absolute favorites. And one is called the Shad Curl Tail, and the other is called the Shad Swimmer. And the Swimmer has a little thumper tail on it, and it, is, it takes almost nothing to make that thumper move back and forth. And then the little curl tail right here, that moves with almost no movement too, and it's beautiful. And the two of them combined offer a, you know, a real contrast because the little thumper looks just like a shad and the little curl tail looks just, it's a generalist bait, it looks just about like anything you'd ever want. The other thing of course is you can actually, these are designed to be injected with these shad scales. So they have a little tubular opening, or I should say a little slit opening in them. That goes in there like that. You can inject into the little pouch inside the bait, or you can just put the stuff right on the outside of the bait right there. And when you put that into the water, it gives off not only a shad scale look to it, but there's also scent and taste involved. So really dynamite options, and I'm using mainly the curl tail today, but that little thumper is really dynamite too. So the nice thing about this is it's so visual. I love this, I love this, I love this. You see the habitat the fish are in. You see how they're reacting. They're up here getting it together to spawn. They move in, they move out. 
Some of them are Roman, some of them are stuck on spots. <clears throat> Not big. Not bad though. And no giant fish today, but really nice fish. For the North Country in a lot of places anyway. And I have accomplished my purpose. I've had a great day on the water, beautiful day. And I've got myself a nice meal of fish. Look at here. Selective harvest, nice mess of crappies. Doesn't get any better than that, I guess you'd have to say.